Are you ready to be exposed again, my dear? Oh what? god. Alright, let's go. Why is my cables constantly getting stuck on my I really need to fix my arm chair. <laughs> I've like I've had the replacement arm in my room for nearly a week and I just haven't had the time to actually uh oh shoot, I need to actually stream the thing to you, don't I? Whoopsie. <laughs> Professional YouTuber, by the way. Right, so this is the horoscope on this one, because I was going to put you through final rev um, the final one, but I feel like this one's kind of already, already in the trilogy, so I wanted to do this one in order. Okay. So, obviously, I've only got like an hour to record today, but I will be finishing early tomorrow, so we'll probably get the second one done tomorrow, all right? Okay, that works. Because I am so busy, I'm visiting my grandmother on uh, Saturday and she's dragging us out for a meal and it's going to be a car room, which means I'm going to have to dress up for it because that means it's going to be pictures taken. I don't like having my picture taken. Yeah, I don't either, don't feel bad. I can't stand having my picture taken. Oh, but no, my grandfather is like a photo fanatic. <laughs> like, he keeps complaining um, that... Yeah. He's always complaining that he doesn't have a good picture of me and mum because, like, me the last time me and my mum took a picture together, like, properly was, like, four years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, we don't take pictures together very often. Right. So, yeah, we know it's natural intuition. I've done this chat. I've done this too many times now. <laughs> I like putting my friends through torture. Like, she's got exposed so badly. <laughs> I know, I saw that. I was like, I wrote in the comments, I was like, damn, Cheese got called out. To, be, to give you an idea, like, at, like Cheese's debt at the time of recording that video was worse than mine. And I'm oh, in over God. four grand debt right now. Oh, damn. Yeah, because my, well, to be fair, my dental treatment is like, what? Nearly two thousands of that, to be fair? Yeah. Nearly there. Nearly there. They only got like six more months and then it's all paid off um are you afraid of the dark psycho no no meanwhile nope. me i need i one of the reasons i got like any led lights up in my room even though like the battery's kind of dying and i need to replace it is because i actually genuinely am scared of the dark like pitch blackness oh. i can't do it don't bother me unless i'm with somebody <laughs> would you consider yourself to be a loner yes yeah okay do you ever feel alone even when you're in a crowd always i don't feel lonelier when i'm in a crowd than i do on myself because at least with myself i can keep, kind of keep my own company does that make sense it does yeah if you knew the date of your best friend's death would you tell them yes in a heartbeat of course so, i'd tell you so if you knew so if you knew the date i was gonna die you'd tell me yes i would tell you thank best friend have you ever been in a physical fight? Yep. We went over this question. Yes. Are you uncomfortable in deep open water? I the deepest open water I've ever been in is an eight foot pool, so and I wasn't scared in that, so I think I'd be pretty comfortable in an ocean, so I would say yes. So are you so are no, you uncomfortable? No. Yeah, so you've been so you're no, not gonna be on I'm not I wouldn't be. Got it. If you could give up your friends to become rich and famous, would you? Well, I'm going to answer that question for you. No, because you're not that type of person. Hell no, I wouldn't. <laughs> if, my if my friends can't be rich and famous along that side me, I don't want none to do with it. Yeah, very, very true. Oh, my God. Can you stop telling me that life is strange is on my wish list? I don't have money. <laughs> Steam. God damn it. If you looked into a crystal ball and saw that the love of your life was going to hurt you badly, would you leave them? Depends on what they do and how, like, what yeah, would be this is what I This is what I was thinking, because, like, for example, if it's, like, a hurt really badly, but it's, like, only a temporary thing, um, then I would usually say no. But if, say, for example, it was something really, really big, like that person murdered, murdered like, a family relative or something like that, my brain would instantly go, no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yup. But it's, I like mean, the, it's like a butterfly effect, though, isn't it? So if you make, like, one decision, that influences, like, the rest of the wing, so to say, being the wing representing your right. life. Like, if they cheat on you and you forgive them, it's like, oh, well, I did this and they forgave me. Let's see what else I can get away with, kind of thing. Yeah, the cheating's a bit of a soft subject. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, right, 
I am like I'm. I would like to say I'm fairly transparent about everything that went down there. Like if yeah. someone that comes up to me and goes, "Oh, did you cheat on your ex? On your ex boyfriend?" Yeah. He was emotionally neglecting me for like four odd years, and what did you think was gonna happen eventually? <laughs> I know, Sir, right? I like how we completely got off the topic. I like how we completely forgot we're supposed to be doing a quiz right now and then we just went on a random chat for like 45 minutes. Hey, that's what friends do. Oh, yeah. Do you want to finish this quiz it's... anyway? Yeah, let's finish it. Because unfortunately I've got, I've got my end of year review meeting tomorrow and I'm fucking dreading it, which means I have to get up early. Uh-oh. Oh, man, you're just going to kill me, but it's okay. He loves me too much, he won't kill me. He might chew yeah. you out a little bit, but he ain't gonna kill you. Well, he's not gonna chew me out. I'll just turn around and look at him and say, "Don't stop changing your fucking process every two minutes, and it'll be all right." <laughs> right? I'm really sarcastic in my meetings. I really should calm down, but I ain't. So we said that you would leave them for this question, didn't we? Yes. Ah, <laughs> didn't want to accept it then. Would you consider <laughs> yourself to be courageous, psycho? Yes. Yeah. Anything for the fur baby. Would you consider yourself to be a shallow person? No, I don't think I am. No. Okay. Do you fear the unknown? Um. Well, the way I see that question is how can you be afraid of something that you haven't experienced? So, I, yeah. like, if, like, if the opportunity, like, came up and it's like, oh, like, okay this the the trip that i'm i'm you know i'm planning to come see you in september you know mm -hmm. that's like an unknown thing for me because i've never left the usa so yeah. it's like an unknown thing it doesn't scare me it's like an exciting thing because it's like oh this is a new experience i yeah. see the unknown as like a new thing so it's like no i'm not afraid of it i want to see what it is now see for me when i first read this question my brain instantly thought that's not you because it's asking the unknown for me the unknown is like in the future like but to me that would be if the question says for example do you fear the future then yes because i'm yeah. terrified because i'm like 24 next year i'm not getting any younger and i'm not where i want to be in life right now but yeah the unknown to a degree excites me because it makes me wonder what am i you know what where is my current path gonna lead me so it's not about right. fear of the unknown, it's a, a more fear of the future. So yeah. you want to put down note for this one? So you yeah. don't fear the unknown. Brilliant. I don't. Does answering a ringing phone give you anxiety? Not really, because one, my phone doesn't ring that often, and for two, when it does, I automatically typically know who it is, so no, not yeah, really. Yeah, see, it does with me. Not quite, which it sounds really bad because I work in a call centre, right? But if I see a phone number, because like my old phone number was um, set up to a lot of scams, and oh. every time I saw an unknown number, I would get anxiety, and my nan temporarily had to use a different phone number because she put her mobile credit on her old mobile number by accident, and I'm not very good at memorizing phone numbers. So I was seeing oh. OT and a new number thinking, is that is that man? Is it a scammer? Yeah. Because like as soon as the breakup went down, I literally deleted everybody's numbers and everything. So imagine I see a phone number ending with the last four digits as my ex, I'm thinking, fuck, has he called me? I answer the phone and it's a scammer. I was like, oh, okay, you're not who... You're not who I thought it was gonna be, so I put it underneath a saucepan and started smashing it with a wooden spoon until the guy hung up. Oh shit. <laughs> well, I probably made somebody deaf, but never mind, so it doesn't give you anxiety. You no? Nope. If you found a suitcase full of money, would you keep it? Yes, to be perfectly honest, because being broke sucks. <laughs> Mood. Does the name John mean anything to you? Nope, it don't. Good. Would you consider yourself to be manic? Uh, when I don't, like, I will, s yes, because I get maybe a good, one good eight hours of sleep once a month. The rest of the time I am, I am what my, my psychiatrist calls a high functioning, um, insomniac. Like, I can go days and days and days without sleep, but I can function like I've slept for eight hours every single night. Yeah, see, I've never understood that with me. 
Um, I'm one of those people that I can stay up, but I need to have a good night's sleep the following night because otherwise I am going to start crashing. Like, when Timmy passed away, I, d I barely slept that night. I slept like two hours. Had to go back into yeah. work on the Monday. Now, bear in mind, I'd already not slept very well the past two nights. I actually took a break from recording that weekend. Went back into work on Monday and someone said my eyes looked very red. They were quite bloodshot because I was just not sleeping properly. So as soon as yeah. I finished work that day, I literally went to I went to bed and I just slept for like 60 hours straight nearly. Oh, damn. Oh, so as you can imagine, it was a nightmare. Uh, but you would say yes to this question, yeah? Yes. Oh, yeah. Do you get bored easily? Nope. Brilliant. Do you ever take dangerous and unnecessary risks? Um, very rarely, but does walking to my sister's count as dangerous? <laughs> I mean, yes, because you put yourself through torture for that. So I'm going to put you down as yes, just because you said it says, do you ever? And you yes. do sometimes. I, I do I'm too, much of a, I'm too much of a wimp to do that shit. <laughs> oh, I had blisters on my feet for fucking weeks after that. It took it took weeks for the blisters on my feet to heal. Eesh. And even now, even now, my feet can get kind of sensitive to like if I'm walking, like if I'm if I'm up on my feet longer than just a few minutes, I start to develop blisters on my toes and I have to sit down because yeah. of the, because of the sensitivity in my feet now. Yeah, see, with me, I walk for ten minutes and I just collapse on the floor. <laughs> I'm not very good. Like, I can't exercise very well. Like, that's one of the reasons me and my doctors always get into arguments because they tell me that for the UK, I'm obese. Uh huh. And it, like, it genuinely upsets me. But the way that I see it is one, there are girls out there who pay money for the size I am and the, like, the figure I am, first of all. Yeah. And then, second of all, the other thing, and this is probably one of the biggest things that I try to bear in mind when I'm thinking about my weight, is, you know, it's no secret I have a relatively big chest. So when I yeah. run, if I run without like wearing the proper support, I will knock uh -huh. myself out in the face. And that makes things like running very difficult. The best exercise I could do being the size I am is swimming, but I have a problem with my ear. So if water gets trapped in my ear, it will basically guarantee to give me an ear infection. And in the UK, you can't get certain things unless you're prescribed it. So oh. if I got an ear infection, say for example, I got an ear infection on a Saturday, I'd have to bear uh -huh. through the pain on Saturday and Sunday and then get a doctor's appointment on the Monday and then go Try to the pharmacy to get it. And obviously we all know the longer you leave an infection, the worse it gets, but there is, it's not classed as an emergency because you know, you're not like losing blood or anything. So you just have right. to bear the pain until Monday. So I know it sounds really bad, but usually I've... in the UK, if say for example, I'm still really struggling. Uh -huh. I will genuinely because they give you only a dinky bottle in the UK for like um I forget what it's called, but like the ear drops that you have to like squeeze into your ear to like clear up any ear infection. I genuinely yeah. like when when it starts getting better, I will gen genuinely call the doctors and say, oh, I dropped the bottle or something like that to basically justify getting another one, just so I have one spare. So if I start right. developing an ear infection over the weekend or a bank holiday it's easier for me then to basically start treating it straight away well before i get more medication because they're proper stingy in the uk for medicine the only thing that i get regularly which i don't ever have a problem with is my contraception pill that's the only thing right. in the uk but they will give me in bulk like they will give me a year's supply in one go because wow. like, i have the i have the opportunity as long because i have to take one once a day at the same time yeah. But I can stop that at any point. Like, if me and Cade, in, in, like, say, for example, I was still on the pill, and then two years from uh -huh. now, me and Cade turned around and said, actually, we want to start considering having a family, and we want to we want to have give it a go, I could stop it yeah. whenever I want to. Well, if, say, for example, I had something like the implant, which I've heard can mess a lot of people up, especially the women. Yeah, the, the implant can... There is a risk of the implant causing sterilization. Do not go that route. Yeah, I would never do that. So I've always stuck to pill and yeah. there, I know that there's a lot of side effects like you know bloating weight you know that kind of thing but yeah. I've personally never had a negative experience from it that's and good. Um, the other thing that's good for me the way that I like it as well is I can stop it whenever I want to and I'm now I'm turning 24 next year as I said earlier I'm getting to that age where I'm start to, I you know I'm dating to marry I'm not dating for like a side thing or anything 
So yeah. when I do eventually decide I do want to settle down, whether it be with Kate or somebody else at the time, yeah, I want to have that control of being able to basically say to myself, I'm ready, instead of going to a doctor and going, yeah, I want to get this done. Because I feel like if I have to go into a doctor to get something taken out, it's going to put me off. Yes. Like, when I had my COVID vaccinations, I'm going to be honest, I genuinely re- rebooked my booster at the time because I was so afraid of going in there. Because the first yeah. jab they gave me hit me so bad with side effects that Ooh. I took time off sick and I couldn't afford to be sick again. So I book, rebooked my booster to take it later in the year after my like illness had been cleared off. So if I did go have to go out sick again, I wouldn't have that problem. Well, so I've noticed yeah. my hair has like started turning darker, and you just see like darker streaks going through my hair. I yes. don't know why. Keep, I don't know why it does that. It's really irritated. I only dyed my hair a couple of days. I only dyed my hair like last week. Um, would you consider yourself to be a thrill seeker? Um, yes, I love amusement parks. And the higher the roller coaster, the the faster I want to go on it. Go go to Blackpool then. We got some banging um theme parks over there. Oh hell yeah! I've never been to Blackpool, but that's where my um that's where my dad originally came from. Damn. So he's a fan of his roller coasters. Bless him. When you die, would you like to be cremated? Uh, hmm. Well, I do like fire. Fire? I do. I like fire. Um. Well. I mean, it, there's a lot. There's like a lot of depend. There's like a lot depending on it. But if if it's left up to me, yes, I would rather be cremated than be buried. Yeah, and I say I don't know if it's the same over in America, but in the UK, you can set yourself a will and have a funeral plan in place that basically goes right when i die i want this to happen i want this to go to this person or this amount of money yep. inheritance that's to this person. that's how they, that's how they do it here too yeah like i personally would prefer to get cremated i know this is going to sound selfish but when my great grandmother passed away she had a funeral and it was a pain in the ass to get everything booked in and oh, wow. i don't i don't want to put that pressure on my family and plus the fact that you know graves are getting more and more expensive and i don't want to put that financial burden on my family like i know i have life insurance in place and stuff like that but life insurance doesn't always cover everything and touch wood i'm relatively healthy i don't have any like ongoing medical conditions other than my obesity but that's a different that's a different subject for another day (laughs) and but i i'm still worried that by the time i get to that age my family's not going to be able to afford any like potential additional costs so I'd honestly yeah. would rather just get cremated because I get, let my family have the ashes because at least then it's a more pain-free experience because then they don't have to go through the horror like the you don't have to sit there listening to things on the funeral really realizing that person's gone and then I watch just, them bury you. Yeah, exactly. I'd rather just kind of be cremated and then just be given back the ashes and at least then my family know right. Okay it's horrible but it's dealt with now it's over yeah and then they can grieve like privately at home instead of having to go to like exactly a, a graveside like out in the open i've i've done that with my dad with my grandparents my great grandma yeah and then the other thing as well is if say for example i was to pass away before my partner i can then put in there that when my partner passes away if they wish to get cremated as well I want our ashes to be put together so that way we're still technically yeah. together even in death yeah that's that now that is that's a sweet concept because that's what that's what um my great grandparents originally wanted to do oh but obviously when my my great grandfather passed away when i was really really young like i didn't even understand the whole concept of life and death when he passed away and i don't want to put i don't want to put my family through that same shit again yeah so. That's understandable. Bless their cotton socks. Would you ever kill an animal under any circumstances? Only if they hurt Anari. If they hurt Anari, yes, I would. So we'll put down yes, Sam, because we have to protect the fur baby at all possible costs? Yes. <laughs> Always protect the fur baby. Would you consider yourself to be romantic? We kind of had this conversation last time. Cause you said you didn't really have like the opportunity to be properly romantic, but you feel like you could be. I could, I think I could if I were, if I was given the chance. So I, I'm going to say yes this time. Okay. Are you a jealous person? 
I don't get jealous, but if I'm with a girl and somebody is looking at her, I will get in. I will get instantly possessive. Oh well, yeah, but that's just protecting what's yours. You know what I mean? Like, if, like exactly. I don't get like jealous. I get protective. Like that's that's like what I said with you. Like I'm I'm all f like you and Cade work out. I'm happy as hell for you. But if he hurts you, God help him. Because <laughs> I oh, will hurt. Oh, right. He's a good I guy. Yes, so be. I will hurt. I will hunt him down, and I will hurt him. I am protective over my friends. Like to give you an idea, one of his mates like made a made a joke about my boobs in the call, and even Cade was like, "Hey, hey come on, no, those are mine," and I'm like. Okay, and well, they technically they belong to me because they're attached on my body, but there we go. That's a subject for another day. Right, so would you want to... So you could be a jealous person, but generally you're not. Right. So we'll probably... So we'll put you down as no? Yeah, we'll go no. Okay. Would you consider yourself to be an empathetic person? Again, toward my friends. I... No, and I generally said yes. Yes. I... As long as it's toward my friends, and I said it before, I wouldn't know how to be empathetic toward myself if somebody put a gun to my head. I'm going to answer this question for you, Psycho, because we all know the answer to this. This is an answer to any, a yes. That is an automatic yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, I'm not. By no means. Hundred percent. Ugh. No. I hated that bitch. She is the reason I'm as fucked up as I am. Uh, we're gonna put no for this one as well, right? No, I loved my dad. My dad was my best friend. When I lost my dad, I lost, I lost, ev I felt like I lost everything. I feel like you always feel like you lose a part of yourself, though, when you lose a family member, though. Like, if anything happened to my mum or my dad, I'd be absolutely mortified. Like, my biological dad is no longer in the picture. I haven't been for years. But, like, if, yeah. I, if anything happened to my dad... I would be gutted because like that's probably oh, yeah. I've only got two males in my family right that I'm actively in contact with being my dad and my grandfather yeah. my grandfather drives me up to the walls like he's like nails on a chalkboard but in the good way because he yeah. keeps me on my toes and then when yeah. I'm going a bit ah my dad's the first person to go right what's going on calm the hell down like he like a lot of the channel upgrades were actually his recommendations like the webcam oh, upgrades cool. the microphone um, he also recommended me looking into buying a stream deck eventually as well. And I'm sat yeah. there thinking, you know what? He's he's preaching because he knows what he's doing. Yep. So, you know, if any, but then with my mum, oh, fuck me. The day that something happens to my mum, I ain't going to be online for like weeks because me and my mum, we're like two peas in a pod. We yes. Got the, when we don't live together, we get along so well. Like, I used to really enjoy Christmas, like, going Christmas shopping and then going, um, you know, decoration shopping. But, like, I'm going to be honest, one of the reasons I think I lost a lot of the whole Christmas spirit is because of how much it all costs now. Because, obviously, I'm yeah. an adult now, so it's one, it's my own money. And then, second of all, a lot of my family are like me. They prefer more expensive things. Yeah. And because we're all trying to lose weight in the family we're not buying each other thing, cheap things like chocolate. So, like, for example, my parents are going on this cruise next year and they just uh -huh. they just want money for it. And all I can afford to give them is, like, 50 quid, which I feel terrible for because the way that I see it, I work a full-time job and I earn more than my mum. So I yeah. want to give them more than 50 pounds. But obviously, with me being in debt at the moment, I have to be more realistic about what I can afford. And obviously, right. June, I'm supposed to be going back to America for a week after my parents come back from their cruise, because I purposely put my holiday off because of their cruise, because they obviously did it first. Yeah. And my parents have not been on a honeymoon since they got married nearly 12 years ago. Oh, wow. Because I was at, like, I was just, just starting my teen years when they got married. Oh. So, as you can imagine, I'm just a bit like, yeah, I think their honeymoon kind of prioritizes me going over and uh, visiting the boyfriend. Right. Even though I've managed to convince him to let Kate stay with me for the week, but there we go. That's a story for another day. Uh, do you <laughs> do you enjoy taking long, relaxing walks? No, because that gives me time to get stuck in my head, and I don't like being stuck in my head. Yeah, see, I like walks, but I don't like long walks. Like, in Wales, I... a lot of... Like, one of the benefits of living in Wales is we do have a lot of scenery over here. And we've uh -huh. got, like, a river. Like, I think it's about a 10 to 15-minute walk away from our house. We've got a river... And sometimes during the summer, you'll see, like, the ducks and the swans. 
Yeah. So and it's like cool. really green. Like next time I go down there, I'll send I'll send you a picture. But for me, now that's that relaxing because it's a walk. short walk. Like to, yeah, to, to that get from point do. A, when you get to get to point A to point B, it takes you about ten minutes if you walk fast, maybe fifteen to twenty if you walk slow. Now, and see, it's that on like I a could... main pathway, which is uh, don't get me wrong. During the winter, it's horribly lit, but if you go during the summer when it's all like quite bright late. Me, yeah. me, my mum and my dad will sometimes all go out for a walk down there during the summer, and yeah, it's and plus seeing the baby duck. Ducks are adorable. Yes, ducklings are cute. Hundred percent. So you say no to that one? No. Listen, right. if it was a, if it was just short, I'd be happy. But if it's long, yeah, if it was nah, any shorter walk, it wouldn't bother me. Me and you would be walking, and then you'll just be like, "Where's she got?" And then you'll look behind me, and I'll just be on the floor I'll be like. Ugh. <laughs> Because I'll be dying. <laughs> plus, it, I'm already str- I'm already going to struggle with the heat over there because you, it's hot in your country. It's freezing over it. Yeah. I again, I prefer cryo over pyro. I would rather live where it's cold. Yeah. D- is Halloween one of your favorite holidays? It is because it lets me justify my weirdness, and I don't have to tell anybody that I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in a higher power of any kind? Nope. We all control our own destinies. Fair enough. If Satan were watching your every move and you knew it, would you feel uncomfortable? Nope. Hey, what's up, buddy? Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Literally me. <laughs> Do you partake in any form of drug activity? No, I do not. Good girl. Do you drink alcohol? Very rarely, like really, really, like once every like few years. So we'll say no then. Exactly. <laughs> I will only drink. I will only drink like if I'm having a. Um, of course, it stops on this question. Um, I will only have like alcohol if, say, for example, I'm out with a meal with my family. So I know I'm with someone who's basically going to be sober as a designated driver, or if it's a special occasion in the comfort of my own home. But. Yeah. I've like learned like since the breakup I learned my limits like yep because I've never been in the position where I could drink alcohol and know that I'm safe enough to test my own limits because obviously I don't know what type of drunk I'd be at the time so I yeah. genuinely was saying to dad look if I drink a bit too much when you speak to me tomorrow can you tell me how many drinks I had and what it was because I'm trying to learn what my limits are so I can have um, free double whiskey and lemonade before I start getting tipsy. And that's Southern Comfort, so that's quite high alcohol. That's, yeah, that's high alcohol content. But, but when I first started drinking, I'd be nearly under the table after one drink, but because I've slowly increased it, yeah, I can now handle more than I could previously, but that is my limit, and I know that's my hard limit. And I don't yeah. mix alcohol drinks either. Like, if, say, for example, I go to Actually, here's a really good example. Me and my mum have a reputation of not sharing anything. Like, we won't share a dessert, we won't share a drink. Even if we bought a picture, we have to buy our separate things because we always end up nicking each other's. Right. weird thing. So my mum, for example, will go for, like, a Blue Lagoon cocktail and I'll go for, like, a Sex on the Beach or, like, a um, Purple Rain or something like that. Usually Sex on the Beach because that's, like, quite common to me. So yeah. I'll have like a picture of sex on the beach and that will cover me for the entire thing. And the pictures in the UK are massive. So they're pretty decent size. You can normally get one or I think it's like two to three drinks out of it. Yeah. So that's I like I'll buy one picture and I know that's enough for me at that point and I don't get sick of the drinks I'm drinking. But right. like for example, if I know I'm having a gin, I'll only have two because I've not had as much right. experience with gin, so I don't want to put myself at that risk. But if I was yeah. going to get a drink, it'd be a pink gin lemonade. Because I'm, I'm weird. I'm fancy. <laughs> I prefer the cocktails and, like, the mixed stuff. Rather than, like, for example, wine. I can't stand red wine. I don't understand how people can drink that. Or champagne. I don't like champagne. I'm really champagne weird with my alcohol. Champagne is, like, what I would call, like, a rich woman's brunch drink. That is what champagne, that is a pussy's drink. If you want, like, a really good drink, like, get a Jaeger bomb or something like that. I've oh, actually tried Lord. Jaeger bombs. You're, talk, you're talking love- to my bar, you're talking to the days I used to be a bar, where I used to be a bartender, and I had someone coming over order 12 Jaeger bombs. I was like, do you, do you realize how much alcohol content is in this? The maximum I can tell you is four, unless you're in a group. 
Now, one thing I've never had that I'd love to try is a jello shot. <laughs> Psycho, you're gonna kill me. Because <laughs> when I was a bartender, we all had like our specialized fields, and I was specialized on cocktails and coffee. Funny enough. Oh, shit. So when I was on the breakfast shift, I'd always be doing like all the coffees and everything because we didn't use a machine. We actually did it like properly. Like we oh, had wow. like a milk steamer. And, um, oh. which don't get me wrong, I fucking loved it back in the day. But <laughs> on the night shift, they put me on the cocktail. So most of the time they'd be like, oh, where, where's, um, you know, where, where's, where's the redhead? Because again, I was still a redhead back then. And the right. team would go, okay, right. She's in one of four places. She's either yelling at Stuart because she needs more alcohol not for herself for the bar and he's like right she's either <laughs> mixing cocktails at the back she's either trying to check this helping Stuart again Stuart being my manager with the stock levels or she's probably shouting at Dave because the delivery didn't turn up right and then lo and behold two seconds later you hear me screaming at Dave in the background <laughs> nice so but I hate I tell you what I love I love bartender work but I hate the hours if I could do bartender work nine to five i would do that genuinely because i do miss like making up all these crazy cocktails right because i made mine very pretty Aww. but do you have any sexual fetishes or fantasies that you consider bizarre or uncommon now i think we can all answer this question for you i think that's gonna be a yes yes yeah. i do <laughs> <laughs> do you thrive under pressure no i don't i no. i break it yeah that's one of the things like when i was like deciding on double upload i was actually going to do double upload um in october because i was kind of like um, you know what therapy breakup i was like wait i haven't planned enough for this i don't know if i'm going to keep up with it i don't know how i'm going to get as soon as i get in front of that camera and plus right. uh, my brain was going well with december you know um the kids are off of school you know there's going to be more people around to watch the content and appreciate it a bit more i think and then they're not going to feel overwhelmed right so that's why i decided to do it in in december more so than anything would you end the world with a push of a button if you're able to? As long as I could save my best friend, yes, I would. Okay. Do you sometimes hope for the coming of a zombie apocalypse? Yes. Oh, God. Because me... gamers, let's go. Ga that would be gamers' time to shine. Yes, it would. Have you ever killed an animal? No. No. If you had to resort to cannibalism to survive, would you be able to? In a survival situation, I mean, humans can get desperate. I think I could, like... I feel like I could if I could find some way to cook the meat first. I know that sounds really, really bad, but... Not really, no. I mean, who wants to eat raw human, you know? That's just weird. Well, plus we'd probably get sick with that logic. Probably. Do you like... You're an American psycho. Do you like guns? Nope. I prefer good old-fashioned hand-to-hand -hand combat and a knife. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> God damn it, this quiz! Yes! Hey. Oh, hammers and bats can get you a very long way if you use correctly. Oh, yeah. I, lo I love hammers and bats. We've actually got a baseball bats somewhere downstairs that my mum used to use when she used to play baseball back in the day. But she's genuinely uh -huh. like used it to protect the house at one point. Because right. it was that bad. I'll, 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 I'll tell you the story later, but oh my god, it was... Mum tells me and I'm too... And she's like... Kim, this was a really dis serious situation. Why are you laughing? I was like, because I can just imagine you with a bat. <laughs> <laughs> so I, call, I call her a bat anyway. She's got bat hair. And do you believe in aliens? No, I don't. Okay. Theoretically, if you had the opportunity to go to space on an alien vessel, would you go? No, because I wouldn't be able to take an Ari with me. I mean, you could potentially and get an Ari like a, a cat-made suit. That's true, but what if I couldn't, like, what if it was, like, an immediate thing and I couldn't find one for her in time? Yeah, so we'll put no. If you could leave Earth and go to space, never to return again, would you leave? Again, this is kind of dependent on if you can take an Ari with you. Exactly, so no. If I couldn't take an Ari and I couldn't take my best friend, I wouldn't go. Did you know that over 20% of koala bears have chlamydia? No, and how is that even relevant to the questions? That one wasn't really relevant, I just thought it was interesting. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> Are you alone right now? No, I have a Nari with me, and I have my sister's Chihuahua, so not really. Uh, do you get starstruck easily? Nope. 
Have you ever said a prayer? Uh, oh boy. Um. That sounds like a yes. <laughs> yes, but only because it had to do with my kids. Right. Okay. Yeah, because the only time I've like ever said a prayer was in my I got put in a Catholic school when I was growing up, like as like a primary school. So the way it works in the UK is like from the age of four to about 10 to 11 you're in like primary school which is like basically like your first level of like your first level of education and depending on how you do in primary school that influences what classes and stuff you go into secondary school which is like your last form of education before you can go out into the working world Uh so after you finish secondary school you essentially have like four options you can either go for an apprenticeship which is basically a job which you get a qualification out of at a discounted rate so you basically pay for your qualification through your pay so you're just on like a lower hourly wage but you come out of like a contract with a job in most circumstances Uh and a qualification um you've got college uh sixth form which is basically secondary school but more fancy um or you can just go into like the normal working world as an adult as long as you have your national insurance number which is like how the government identify you as a taxpayer in the uk so when yeah. I finished, I went for, um, I did, so what a lot of kids in, um, uh, at least when I was in this, um, this age group did, I got, I took a college course, but then I did like a retail job as a part-time job to like earn myself some pocket money between classes. But obviously because okay. I was put in a Catholic school when I was younger, you know, they said, oh, if you're not religious, you don't need to pray. But I was one of those kids that, you know, I was already bullied enough. And then if I didn't pray, say the prayers with everybody else. Yeah. It, you would get looked at weird. So you were kind of forced into it. Yeah. But as soon as I got out of secondary school or as soon as I got out of that school, and went to secondary school. I was like, yeah, I'm not religious at all. So there you go. You know, like I believe in some form of higher power. Because like witchcraft exists, and obviously that's a lot of my my ancestors, my ancestors and stuff like that. Right. And plus, some of the things that my mum's done is a little bit freaky. Makes me a love <laughs> makes me a love spell jar after me and Luke break up, and then Cade comes into my life. Right. So I'm a bit okay. That was a bit too effective for my own good. And then like I keep <laughs> crystals a lot like near me. Like I've got a rose quartz. I've got like a clear quartz and that kind of thing in my bedroom. Like I have necklaces. And yeah. whenever I'm wearing them, I feel generally like a lot better. You know, I'm a lot more balanced. I don't know if that's because of the situation or if it's because obviously it's having like a side effect. But it's it's a weird one. Like you know, when you you think you might believe in someone, but you're not a hundred percent sure because you haven't had enough time or like enough evidence. Yeah, it's kind of like that kind of thing. But you said yeah. you have said a prayer before because it was in relation to your kids. So we're gonna put down yes. yes. I swear this quiz is listening to me. I think it's listening to both of us. Yes. Do you believe in magic? Yes. Yes, I do. Do you believe in angels? Ironically, no, I don't. I do not believe in, like, the whole, like, heaven concept. Strangely enough, I believe in hell, though. So you believe that there's a hell, but you don't believe there's a heaven? Nope. Okay, I do, so... however, believe that everybody, like, when, I, I don't believe in an afterlife per se, but I believe that a person will go where they're meant to go based on how they live their life. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, uh, so you, would you say you believe in demons, and if you believe in, like, the whole hell stuff? Yes, I do. I mean, to be honest, we all get played by our own demons anyway, don't we, like, with our traumas and stuff? Yeah, we do. Mine a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> If you could summon a demon, would you do it? Now, my question to this was, what type of demon are we summoning? If it's a succubus, oh, hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> Literally my <laughs> same response as me. If it's a <sighs> succubus, you know, I am down to play, come on. If it's any kind of a different type of demon, as long as it's a female demon, sure, why not? I mean, but what if it's a male demon, but they're going to give you really good power? Mm, like, if you made a do- if, like if you made a bargain with it. That depends on the kind of power we're talking. Like, if I, like... Are we talking, like, magic power? Or are we I mean, talking, like, like, like... Have you seen Death Note? Yes, I have. Like, like with a Shimigami, thing. like, for example, with Ryuk or something like that. Like, the power to kill off all of my opponent, all of my enemies, just by writing their name in a book? Yeah. 
or the type to where I like I could have like all of my wishes come true like I could be like a really good YouTuber I get my writing published and things like that I would rather take my, having my writing published over being able to kill my enemies honestly because that would get me money and then that would be able to let me like like say like visit you more often or yeah. like go anywhere I want like and then all my all, like my enemies can just sit and fucking rot <laughs> Yeah, see, the one of the things that I would probably wish for, I know it's going to sound really selfish, but I honestly would wish I didn't need to work another day for the rest of my life, so it would be money. Because one of my biggest no, future restrictions is time, because unfortunately I have to take care of myself to a, to a certain degree. I'm working yeah. seven hours a day on a full-time wage, and obviously I'm doing YouTube on the side. And my yeah. job is like really mixed shifts. So one day I could be working from 8.30 in the morning to 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon. And then the next day I could be working 11 o'clock in the morning to 7 p.m. at night. So trying to work around YouTube is quite tricky. But obviously because of my debts and things like that, I can't afford to drop down my hours. And if me and Kate right. are going to make this work, there's probably going to be, be a point in time where he doesn't have a job and I'm the only person in the household bringing an income in. So I don't want to be potentially losing any potential money because the UK is a very, um, it's very awkward. Because I actually applied for a flexible working shift pattern. So I would work four longer days, but then have one day off during the week. And that got declined because oh. it wasn't available. But if I could say, for example, work longer days on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then have the Friday off, that would be more beneficial to me because that would give me an extra day at home to record. Yeah. Now, the thing about, like, working over here in the U.S., like, you can work, like, what they consider part-time is 20 hours a week. 20, like, the, yeah, what it's the same work, over here. Anything under 30 hours. Time. Yeah, in the U.K., anything under 30 hours is classed as uh, part-time work. Oh, okay. But what, so a, lot, but what a lot of people... What a lot of people over here do, though, is say, for example, they'll work 20 jobs for one, or 20 hours for one job because that's all the only contract they got available. But then, for example, they might do another job, which is a zero hour contract, so they can say when they can work. So let's say, for argument's sake, you've got um, this lady who's working Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays at five hours a day. She can then go to her other employer and go, right, OK, I can work on Wednesday after this time or I can work on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever time you need me. Because unfortunately, contracts are like a really big thing in the UK. Like I'm sounding like I'm sounding like bloody um Zhong Li now, but with <laughs> contracts, like you'll work normally, you'll either work like a zero hour contract, so you work basically as many hours as you're given, or you put yourself up to, but it's yeah. not guaranteed. Or you do what I do and have what you call a full time contract, which means you work a set number of hours a week, and you're working on a yearly salary. So. You know, you get things like sick pay, you get things like annual leave and stuff like that, but you're okay. basically guaranteed to get about the same wage every month, so it's a lot more consistent. Because right. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but over in the in the US, you guys normally get paid like weekly or bi-weekly, right? So every two weeks? It depends on the type of job you, you have. Like, like fast food, you get paid like bi-weekly, you get paid every two weeks. But there are some jobs that you can work, say, like, construction, where yeah. they'll lump your paycheck into, like, one monthly paycheck, and you get paid every month. Yeah, because that's how we mostly do it in the UK. Most, like, zero-hour contract jobs, like, for example, if you work in the NHS, you get paid weekly. But if you're working, like, a normal job, you're nine times out of ten, you're paid monthly. Oh, so in okay. retail, the only time that the middle of the month is, like, really busy is, like, during Christmas time. Because, yep. like, obviously, other times, people just don't have really the money to spend. Yeah. So, like, if you try to get time off, like, at the beginning of the end of the month for a majority of big corporations, like big companies, it's an absolute nightmare. But if you want to try and get time off during the middle of the month, it's usually a lot easier because people aren't booking that time off because they don't have the money. So yeah. if I say, for example, no, I'm going on a shopping trip with my nan or something, I'll put some money away for a couple of months before the hand. And then yeah. just have the money there because otherwise I just wouldn't have the money to spend anything. I'm going to answer yes for this question because we have played the test already on the channel. Okay. Right. Let's see. If you could travel back in time, would you? No, because there's there's too much shit that's happened in my past and I just don't like it. Mm. If you could travel forward in time, would you? Yes, because I would. I want to see like what the future would hold for me. 
Yeah. Do you like horror movies? Yes, I do. I say I can't stand them. I'd be too scared. <laughs> I'm like one of those people that like I will like you've seen how jumpy I get when like someone like a killer and DVD comes out of nowhere. Yes, Imagine I've like seen me your watching DVD a movie. Video. I've seen your DVD videos. You get re like the slightest little rustle and you jump. You're like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> well, that's because Kate is giving me emotional trauma from playing killer. <laughs> Would you consider yourself to be evil? No. However, the only exception I would make is for my ex. And yeah. I mean, I mean, to I be honest, I think we're all a bit no naturally nasty towards our exes. Like, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I actually had um, I had a question on a Q and A video that I was going to record the other day, and someone uh -huh. like said to me, "If you could say one last thing to your ex, what would you say?" Like, my natural gut instinct would be to say something nasty, but I'd probably say something along the lines of, "Oh." you know just remember what i said forget about me turn the page is your next chapter like you know that kind of thing like me trying to be genuine but yeah. depending on the circumstances if i could say like literally anything i think i would probably like say something on the lines of oh thanks for wasting four years of my life or something like that because i genuinely do feel like i've lost a good chunk of time because of everything that went down yeah and i don't want to be the type to be jumping into whatever relationship um you know me and Kate did happen really quick. I will be blunt. Like, you know, we were flirting for a little bit. There was already chemistry there. But then, yeah. obviously, everything went down. He told me how he felt. And I was like, right, okay, well, it's mutual. So, you know. Right. Because, like, I will be honest. I was talking to multiple people. Because it was like, okay, you've got this person here who's a bit more experienced on that field and is more genuine personality-wise. But then you've got this other guy who's a bit more um you know a bit more mysterious like i'm gonna be honest the person i was speaking to that luke found out i was actually speaking to uh -huh. um he lied to me an awful lot like i actually went to physically go meet him like he yeah. completely lied about who he was you know he lied about his income he, he wanted he wanted me to break the law to be with him basically so he wanted oh, me to say that on. i was like bed sitting with him to like avoid getting so he wouldn't lose his tax like so there's a thing in the uk that you have to pay council tax which is essentially like a bill that you pay every month to basically keep a roof over your head it's like it's basically like a secondary rent and your council tax will kind of depend on what band house you've got so like how many bedrooms is it what kind of energy efficiency is it like that kind of thing yeah. so if your house is like very eco-friendly you'll be a lower band. Well, if, say, for example, you've got a bigger house which is considered more eco, like, eco-damaging because, obviously, it's going to take more energy to heat up and things like that, you'll have a higher band house, which means you pay more council tax. Uh. But in the UK, if you're what they call a solo occupancy, as in you're the only person, like, only human living in that um, building, um, you uh -huh. can get what they call, um, like, I forget what they call it now, it's like a solo occupancy discount or something like that. So you get like a discount on your council tax, but because well, you are because you are on your own, so you're technically using less resources. But I, as soon as someone moves in with you, that discount goes. The only situation is if the person is bed sitting, as in they're only there temporarily for like a certain amount of time. So he basically um, wanted me to lie to the council in that area and say that I was only living there temporarily until I could find somewhere else to live. Oh fuck that which i'm not doing considering i work in finance and then he also said that he drove that was a full fucking lie he didn't own a car he wasn't working he was living off of benefits it's just like yeah there's too this is too many lies first of all and then oh. he tried to force himself on me oh, like he like it. he like he wanted to he wanted me to have kids with him like it got really bad oh my god so thankfully my why well, i say thankfully it's horrible what happened my grandfather had to go into the hospital and my nan called me while i was down there so she sent me the money to basically get a ticket to come straight back because we didn't think my grandfather was going to make it and i was Ooh. already kind of back home at the point he, oh my grandfather's a stubborn prick he ain't going anywhere he comes out <laughs> completely fine without without scratch after i shout at him being like stop fucking you know i can't leave you alone for two seconds without you scaring me right but I was kind of already back in Newport at that point, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to block him. Yeah. Because I did not want to be 
I, did, I'm, I was going to, I'm going to be honest, I was going to send him a message and just kind of say, look, you know, this is goodbye. I don't like who you are as a person. You've lied to me too much. I don't think I can trust you. And now that I've met you face to face, I'm not really interested. But like, he got psychotic. Like he was messaging my mum on Facebook. Oh trying my to God. get me to respond back to her to him and um it got to the point where even my mum was kind of like oh will you just fucking respond to him and like answer him and i was like well no i'm not gonna do it until i know i'm in the in the walls of my own house thank yeah. you he lives in a city that's like four hours away from me and i know he can't drive and he doesn't have my address that's good so i know he's got no way of tracking me down plus the fact he's blocked on everything but there we go but yeah, that's one of the reasons why I feel like we're always going to be kind of slightly nasty to our exes. I'd say I'm more, I would be more nasty to other individuals than my exes because, you know, it was my fault what happened and, you know, he just reacted as I expected him to. But yeah. I wouldn't have gotten to that point if certain things had happened. So it's one of those things that I feel like I could be evil and I could be nasty to my ex, but I would kind of just go either A, que pasa, try to pretend that I'm someone else. Yeah. And that there's a doppelganger of me somewhere. Or my other alternative, to be honest, would be to just walk away and basically just say, Look, yeah. I don't want to talk to you. Because I'm kind of, I I'm know, I'm going to sound, I'm going to sound pretty hypocritical now, considering all the drama I put myself through. But I'm getting too old for it. I'm 24 next year. I really cannot be asked. Yeah. But would you consider anyone else to be evil? I'm going to answer this question for you. That's a yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. If if I could say anything to my ex for all the shit that he put me through and for everything that he did, yeah. If I could say, and this is this is going to sound like this, this is kind of like the 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 worst half of me or the not so pleasant half of me. Yeah, we I would flat tell him to. Yeah, I would tell him to drop dead and go to hell, or I would drag him there myself. And then I help you with the body, because he's a heavy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Can't guarantee I'll be in my child because I'm weak as shit, but there we go. <laughs> One... <laughs> this is going to make you laugh. One percent of the population are psychopaths, which means that out of 100 people that you've encountered in your life, you've met at least one psychopath. Chances are you speak to a few of them on a daily basis. Did you know that? Honestly, no, I did not. The thing is, I'm probably I'm probably a psychopath. Yeah, you and me both. We're probably <laughs> both psychopathic. Well, there you go. That answers that question for you then, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you think you could potentially... Yeah, I, I honestly, yeah. I think I could be. It's better to kill than be killed. Do you agree? Fucking Flowey. All right, Flowey. <laughs> Into, it's All right, stealing, Flowey. Stealing the quiz, yeah. <laughs> Flowey, what the fuck, man? Um... That depends on who it is. Like, if we're traveling kind of back to the circle of exes, I would rather I would rather be the one to have the knife in my hand. Yeah. Then him. Okay. The thing is, I'm thinking as like a general basis. I personally would prefer to kill than be killed. Yes. So Absolutely. I would say, yeah. Like yes. when I did this, I was thinking yes. Exactly. Do you, think, do you think that stealing from big corporations is acceptable? Honestly, yes, because they steal from they steal from like they steal from each other. They steal from smaller companies all the time. It's called let's corporate. Let's not talk espionage. about yeah. Let's not talk about taxes. <laughs> it's fucking corporate espionage, you know. Hundred percent. Are you afraid of anyone in your life? No, because the three people that I was afraid of the most, they're no longer near me. Good girl. Do you enjoy gambling? Um. I'll get like a dollar scratch off ticket every once in a while and I'll win like anywhere between one to five dollars, but like I don't do it like excessively. No, I'll do it, like, I, think, I think the biggest gamble you've ever done is getting Miko. Yo, oh my you god, me. that was a that was a one in a thousand shot. I still cannot believe I pulled that off. I told I told I told you if you if you like this is one thing right so when I pulled child for the first time I got three five stars in one temple so I got one child I got a gene and then got another child and then got another child about thirty pulls later sadly the video yeah. had to be taken down because of the individual who was also in that video um, at yeah. their request for the record and then I keep getting right. people going how have you got a C four child and I'm like because um and they're like well is it because you wailed for him. 
the truth is i was honestly manifesting getting him for so long like that's one of the reasons why i say with genshin a lot of it is down to self-control because if you yeah. know for example you want a character you stick to yeah. wanting that character yes like i've missed multiple characters that i've wanted because i was saving to Scara. And right. unfortunately for me, I lost my 50-50. So obviously, which meant I had to then save up the wishes to basically get near enough so when I get paid, I can basically purchase the rest of the wishes to guarantee him. But right. I'm one of those people that I'm now getting as basically as close to free to play as possible, being that I'll only buy the Welkin, which gives me the Primo Gens for login in daily, and the Battle right. Pass. Those are the only two things in the game that I will now purchase everything else i will earn naturally yep like for example there's a leak going around at the moment at a new lisa skin in genshin really yeah and Ooh. the thing with four star um outfits is normally they'll do an event which if you participate in the event they'll give you the four star outfit for free oh nice and then they'll usually bring out a five star and then that one will actually cost you money but there we go so, do you want to put down yes for enjoying gambling and going off the scratch card thing? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. Are you afraid of spiders? Nope. I've actually held a tarantula. Now, see, with me, if you if I saw a spider, I'd be back, I'd be going to the next country. Yeah, you'd be running. You'd be like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> I d oh, they're, talk they're talking about bringing um, a Five Nights at Freddy's character into Dead by Daylight, and I'm terrified. Oh, God. Which one? I don't know. I would imagine it's probably either Springtrap or, f like, Foxy, maybe? Picture they... more Mangle. I would picture Mangle, because Mangle's, like, all, like, dis- like, uh... Like yeah, but it'd be the game, it'd be the play style though, because if say for example the, she had a mechanic where she for example could climb on walls, that wouldn't really she be can. beneficial for- Yeah, obviously, if they did that in Dead by Daylight that would be very hard for the team to implement and they'd have to really pull off her ability to make it yeah, useful. Yeah, that is true. That so is true. That's why I kind of thought Foxy or like um, Springtrap. Springtrap has a lot of lore and they could do a lot with cosmetics. And Foxy that is, is kind of one of the more naturally known to be aggressive characters in the game yet. Like, yeah, quick. we will bolt down that fucking hallway ready to come for your ass cheeks. Oh, well, hell yeah. will give Foxy's you a bit more fast. of a warning. Like imagine Foxy if you're playing thing. DVD as a part, no sorry not DVD, you're playing um, FNAF as usual, you look at the camera and then you just see this fucking thing with a hook bolting down the hallway, you're like smacking the door button like fucking shit, shut 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 Yeah, pretty much me, that's why I can never play Five Nights at Freddy's on the channel again, because like, I'd be too scared, I would, I think I'd give myself a heart palpitation. You, you'd probably give yourself a heart attack. Yeah, I probably would. <laughs> Do you believe in legendary <laughs> monsters such as Bigfoot or the lot, lot, yeah. That thing. Lock. I can't English. <laughs> yes. You do? Yes, I do. Okay, fair enough. Do you believe in vampires? Yes, I do, because honestly, vampires bite and they draw blood and it's sexy as hell to me. Amen to that. Uh, do you believe in werewolves? Yes, I do. Mm. Do you have an addictive personality? I don't think I do, no. No. Do you like to cook? Rare occasions, yes. I do. Now, see, I, with me, I, don't... I love cooking. I just can't pull it off. Like, I am a nightmare in the kitchen. Like, I can make something, but I can't guarantee your kitchen will be a shit show afterwards. Because <laughs> I don't. The problem is, I'm not good with measurements, okay? So, like, you'll be like, oh, well, that's relatively straightforward. Like, if, say, for example... Let's just say for actually here's a really good example. I was making some ramen noodles one night and I was getting really bored of like the the packet flavoring because it was like a supermarket brand one. So the flavoring yeah. wasn't as good. So I was like, right, right, okay, I'm gonna put a bit of soy sauce into the broth to try and make these taste a bit nicer. And genuinely yeah. the bottle head broke off and all nearly a whole bottle of soy sauce went into the broth and went into the broth. Oh no. It was so salty. I was like, oh my god. I was like, so like you know that meme? Why is it spicy? Change out spicy to salty, and that was about accurate. Look, I can take four packs of ramen noodles and like and cut up uh like a beef tip steak and I can make homemade beef lo mein. Oh bloody hell, that sounds banging. 
<laughs> it's quite it's quite funny because every single time I speak to Cade, he keeps saying, "Oh, I'm gonna feed you so well when you get over here." And I'm sat here looking at him like, "What do you mean you Americans eat fr- eat proper like?" Like, I see man versus food. I see the steaks you guys come up with, and I'm just like, oh, send me over. Get me fat. I don't care. <laughs> like, I literally said to my mum, I'd lose weight just so I could go to America to get fat again. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> so you said you sometimes enjoy cooking. So do you want to put that down as yes, or are you more towards the no side? Uh, no, that's more toward yes. Okay. Would you say that you're a confident person? No? No, I'm not. Should be, though. Do you think you're physically I attractive? I know Hell I want no. you to say yes, but I know you're going to say no. No, I'm not. Do you think you'd make a good romantic partner? Again, we've had this conversation, so I think you, I think you could in the right situation if the right person was showing you the love and care that you need, like Cade gives me. If if the right woman came along and yeah, she was like the like the female version of Cade, then yes, I think I could. Female version of Cade, huh? Cool, that's be a nice fault. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you lie to people on a daily basis? Hmm. Yes, I do. Hope, hopefully not somebody by the name of Mim. No, not you. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, do you suffer from anxiety? That's a yes. Yes, I do. Do you suffer Bad from depre- Do you suffer from depression? That is also a yes. Yes. Do you exercise daily? Nope. The most exercise I get is cleaning the house, and that's about it. Food. Do you stay hydrated frequently? Nope. I... I'm lucky if I drink water once a week. Are you afraid of drowning? No, because honestly, I don't go swimming that often. Fair enough. Are you afraid of a home invasion? Nope, because I know where the knives are and I would stab a bitch. Have you ever broken a bone? Yep, I've broken several. Mm. I've been so lucky that I've never broken a bone in my body and people are like, you're, you're nearly 24, how have you not broken a bone? And my mum just goes, you don't go outside. I've broken my fingers, my wrist, I've Ugh. fractured... Yeah, I've dislocated both of my shoulders, I've fractured my ankle, I have a degenerative injury in my left knee, which will eventually okay, turn into arthritis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've fucked up most of the bones in my body. <laughs> I've had multiple fractures, or not fractures, but I've had multiple concussions. Yeah, and I'll say the only, I think the worst thing is uh, that I went to hospital because of um, unaliving faults. That's the worst I've ever done. And even then, that's only because I did a cut that went in a bit too deep. So yeah. I had to get, I didn't get stitches, they just basically had to like, they kind of had to stitch. It was weird because my body like healed itself quite quick by the time I got there. So like the he- the bleeding had already stopped. Right. But they were like looking at it all and they were like, okay, right. Um, well, that one is a bit of a... Just to be safe, we're going to cover that one up just so that... How do I word it? It's like tape that they basically... They essentially like push the skin together and then put the mm-hmm. tape on top to basically encourage the healing by keeping the skin together. So it didn't have as much um... area to cover. Gotcha. But they did it, but they did it in a way as well, so I could put like foundation on top of the tape, and then it was nowhere near as obvious I'd done it. So because I had to wear like a dress for work at the time, um, uh-huh. it was like a short sleeve t shirt and a skirt. So um, obviously I said, well, look, I can't, I don't have any ways of covering this up. I can't really go walking around with a bandage because it's like a food safety thing. So I put the tape right. on. I had to like dab it in um, foundation to like basically make it my skin color. Which oh, oh, wow. trying to find trying to find a foundation that was my skin color was an absolute nightmare because I'm like porcelain. Um, I but bet. obviously I managed to cover it up, and thankfully this was before I had tattoos. So as soon as I got as soon as my scar like fully healed up, I got it tattooed, so you can't see it anymore. There you go. But that was a really long time ago. If a killer were in your house, would you run or fight? I would fight. Yep. If your house was on fire and you could safely get out, but in order to save your family or pets, you'd have to venture back and, and sacrifice your life to save theirs, would you do it? We've already had this conversation. You'd do it for an Ari, 100%. Yes, I would do it for an Ari in a heartbeat. Because an Ari's a baby. She is. If you contracted a fatal, incurable disease that only gave you three le- years to live, would you try to pass it on to someone else intentionally? No. I would no. just live with it and try to try to like enjoy what time i had left Mm -hmm. 
same as me. If you were being haunted by an evil spirit, would you continue to stay in the house? Yeah, I'd make a deal with it. You don't bother me during my gaming sessions and we won't have a problem. Honestly, like, one of the things that creeps me out, right, is my mom, like, does witchcraft and stuff like that, right? And, you know, she'll, like, do her meditation and stuff like that. And then she'll sometimes look at me and she'll be like, you've got an aura about you today. And I'm like, why well, what the spirit's done now? Like, as a joke. And she'll be like, yeah. were you crying last night? And I just look at her, I'm like, shit. Because she knows, and I don't know how she knows, it scares me. So I feel like, well, I feel like I've got a spirit in my room and it's dogging me out to my mum. Tattletale. Little telltale little shit. If I, <laughs> if I told you that you are currently being haunted by an evil spirit, would you believe me? Hmm. I don't know, because, I mean, I feel like there's things that watch me, but I don't, I feel like they don't, like, they're not malevolent. So you, so you I would, want to, oh, would you say I, I would say no. I would no. say no. Is money one of your favorite things? No, because I don't value money, because I don't have it that often. Yeah. Do you like quiet, relaxing music? Nope, I like the angry type. You enjoyed loud, aggressive music. Well, that just answers that question. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Are you afraid of dolls? Nope. Let's see, I am because my nan like collects like really like real, real life dolls, and they creep me out. Like, do you know? Do you know why dolls were created in the first place? No. To capture the spirits of dead loved ones, so they could continue to watch over their families in a different form. Nope, that just scares me even more. <laughs> Once bitten, twice shy. Do you agree with this exp expression? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you believe in love at first sight? At one time I did, and I fucking regret it. Now see, I to me, it. when people say to me, love at first sight, I don't think always in a romantic sense. Like, for example, um, YouTube, for instance, I like watched my first video of watching Markiplier and I fell in love with him straight away as a content creator, not in a romantic sense. So, right. to me, love at first sight can mean multiple things, but for most people, they'll generally look at that and think, oh, it's in a romantic sense, like a kind of Cinderella type of thing. Right. While with me, I'll think of it as an, okay, right, this is the first time I've experienced this or seen this individual's content and I love what I'm seeing. Right, so, and so it, I it, personally always said yes on this, but if you think on the romantic sense, I definitely say no. Like, I'll look at someone and think, fuck you, cute, but I won't fall in love with that person straight away. Right. As if you um, stand out to me as a person. Like, when me and Kate first started talking, we yeah. were messaging each other on Discord um, after we came off for the night, and I still felt something for him after I stopped talking to him, and that's how I knew something was going on, because I was thinking, okay, well, I... But because I hadn't experienced that feeling in so in so long, I yeah. thought my just been, oh okay, he's kind you know, he's kinda cool, he's different, he actually understands my jokes and he actually thinks I'm semi funny. Right. But I wouldn't say it was love at first sight, it was more of an attraction at first sight, right. and which then developed into love later on. And see people like like you can see somebody or like you can like talk to somebody and you can get like you can like develop an attraction to them but like i i agree like you don't really how do i put it like you can't really call it love because you've never actually seen the person yeah like you can develop like feelings and affections and things like that but i but like if there's like an actual like a click there then mm. yeah that like love happens like you said like later on yeah, so, so you're going to say no to this one, yeah? Yes. Do you believe in the idea of soulmates? The that's one of those questions where like I kind of have to sit and ask myself like if I ever like like actually willingly wanted to put myself back out into like the dating scene like and I met a girl that you know i you know that i clicked with because years ago i 
I when I was still married, I I fell in love with a girl and she I, I'll I'll be straight up honest, ma'am. She was a lot like you. Like she was chubby, you know, like but she had a heart of gold. Like she was she was funny. She was the best thing that I felt had ever happened to me. Yeah. But and you know, I admit I was I was cheating on my ex at the time because I was sneaking out to see her and you know, mm-hmm. we she was planning on getting an inheritance from her grandparents and we had it all planned out. She was actually gonna help me get divorced from my ex and we were gonna like just go. Mm-hmm. And because her grandparents were highly religious and they found out that she was dating a woman, they said either you end the relationship or we cut you out of the inheritance. Oh shit. So they didn't and they didn't but they didn't believe in the whole like sexuality thing. They didn't know. And I did not like her parent like and not just her grandparents, but her her whole family put her under so much pressure i told her i said yeah. sweetheart i said i don't want to see you go through this i said yeah. if you have to end it i said you have to end it it's and one of those situations it, where it, um it the problem, fucking hurt. yeah i can imagine i think it's one of those things though like i feel like with this whole like understanding um you know bis- uh, bisexuality and that kind of thing i feel like it depends on the family like because if everyone's been raised in the same way then yeah. obviously it only takes like one family member to break that tie so to say but if everyone is so raised in those ideas like for like i'm happy to admit i'm bisexual but my parents will definitely when i'm in a conversation with them they'll always say oh you're straight but that's because i've only ever dated males but, yeah. like, they used to meme about me being in a relationship with like my best friend at the time because we just used to spend all of our time together when we were younger and I wasn't like showing right. any of the normal teenager signs being oh I think this boy's cute or whatever I didn't actually show any signs of being interested in any boys until like I was like 15 but yeah um my I, I think my family definitely still lean towards the being straight side but if i have a kid in the future and they come up to me and say mom i'm a lesbian or or mom i'm gay i'm not gonna have a problem with it if anything i'd be proud of them for coming and telling me and admitting it oh to yeah absolutely because like i've got I, again i think it's because i've been in so many different jobs i've spoken to so many different people that i've seen it from multiple backgrounds now yeah and like that's one of the reasons why i personally am not judgeful of whether you wanna you know where i see it if you want to be with a girl or you want to be with another boy that doesn't change who you are as a person so right. why would i judge you for something that i would not have any part of anyway because like i know that me and you talk about like you know um you know we talk about sexual co- like stuff and that type of thing quite regularly because yeah. we've got like that friendship that we trust each other with these kinds of details yeah. But at the same time, if say for example, you know, you know, when you first told me that you were into girls, I was like, okay, you know, that's cool. And you seemed really surprised by that when I said that, because probably because you weren't used to having it, having that kind of um, understanding. But the way that no, I see I mean... it, I like you for you, not because you choose to screw girls or screw boys in the bedroom. You know what right. I mean? Like I don't yeah. let me, I don't let that cloud my judgment on a person. Like, I've had an ex who I've dated before come up to me and go, oh, I'm gay now. And I'm like, oh, congrats, mate. Yeah, and there's, like, I have I have friends who, who are bi, who are gay, who are lesbian. And yeah. I love them all equally. Like, I don't, like, I'm not the type to, you know. Judge. You know, ju- no, I don't judge. Like, I had a really close friend come up to me. Mm. like several several years ago like I'd known her for a very long time and she came up to me she's like I have to tell you something and I said okay what's going on and she was like I could tell she was really nervous about it and she said I have a sexual attraction to women and I said you're a lesbian and she said and she was really nervous about it she said yeah I I do and I'm like and I I got up and I hugged her I said sweetheart I said I am so I'm happy for you I said, you find a girl that loves you for who you are. I said, you go get her. Yeah. I said, you go and date her. And I said, you be the happiest person you can be. And she's yeah. like, you're mad. I said, sweetheart, I said, I'm into women. 
I said, of course I'm going to be happy for you. I said, even if you would have came and told me you were bi, I said, I still would have been happy for you. Yeah, like, I'm going to be honest, I could have, say, for example, two children in the future and both of them could come up to me and say that they're attracted to their own sex and I'm not going to judge. Like, no. uh, yeah. it would probably be like, right, okay, um, that's a that's some news to take in. But the first, like, if, say, for example, I had a daughter and then she came up to me and she goes, Mom, can I talk to you about something? I'm like, yeah, yeah, so I'll say I sit down with her. Oh, God, God, I'd be like 40 by the time this happened. That's the scary thing. <laughs> but then she goes, right, Mum, I've been thinking about this for a while. I'm not sure how to tell you. And I'd be like, you know, sweetie, just tell me what's going on. And then she goes, well, I think, I think I'm into girls and not boys. I would just look at her. I'd just give her a hug and I'd just say, I'm so proud of you. Because I'm, oh, that, I'm would, going I to be that type clap. of mum. I'm going to be really accepting, regardless of what my children do. The only thing I'm not going to be accepting is if they break the law or do something that's, like, really bad. Right. But, like, for example, with the whole thing, like, with drugs. Like, I know this is probably going to sound quite irresponsible of me, but if I found that my kid was doing drugs, I wouldn't be mad, so to say. I'd be more, what got you into this to begin with? Because most of the time it's the company that those kids are around or the crowd they've right. gotten involved in. Like if say for example exactly. I found out that my my you know my my friend my son's best friend has turned to drugs because he's going through problems himself. Obviously I'd be a bit concerned I'd be like right okay what can I do to fix this? But my first yeah. suggestion to him would be like right okay well did this did this start because of your friend and this is not me trying to accuse him I'm just trying to understand where this started so we can pinpoint what caused it and see if there's a way we can move forward together and get you off yeah. of this before it becomes life-threatening or something that's right. more long-term like if say for example my son's smoking I'm not going to approve of the decision but as long as they're over the age of 18 it's their decision to make like obviously I'll give them the advice and go well look you know I wouldn't recommend it I personally can't stand right. smoking but if my child, children enjoy smoking or enjoy drinking, as long as it's not becoming a problem to their health, I'm going to be accepting right. of that because I'm a very big believer of you only live once because I'm, I'm 24 next year and I really don't feel like I've lived my life like I should have done. Like, yeah. I'm good as God. I don't really drink. I'm not an alcohol. Like, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not a drug addict. I've never been involved in a gang. I've never, like, beaten somebody up or anything. Like, on those types of books, I'm good as gold. But if you put me through one of those quizzes, like, oh, have I ever done this or have I ever done that? Most of my answers will be no. And yes, I, I mean, don't I... want... I want to live my life a little bit before I properly start settling down to, like, having kids. Exactly. Because I, once you've had kids, it is a very big commitment. And I don't want to put my children through the same thing me and my mum went through. So I want to yeah. make sure they're stable, as in, you know, they have a dad present in their lives and things like that. Like, I know we're getting onto really deep deep conversations on this one but right. <laughs> but that's what that's the type of mum that i want to be because that's what i needed when i was a kid yeah and i don't want to make the same mistakes that my mum made with me and i hope that my future right. kids don't make the same mistakes with their children as i probably will make because everyone makes mistakes we're all human of course and this is me trying to be like as fair and understanding as possible like one of the reasons i debated starting youtube as long as i did was because i was scared of what my views would kind of come across as a being yeah. as i don't care but i'm one of those people that genuinely i think there's a reason behind everything yeah some things are for the better some things are for the worse granted but i think that's one of the reasons why i managed to get through the whole oh i cheated on my ex kind of thing because at first i hated it at first i was gutted you know i was really like guilt ridden but in the long run it was for the better so even though i'm not proud of what happened i still would argue i came out on top because i've got yeah. an amazing partner now who does genuinely like would chop off his arm for me as i would do for him he supports he cares me about you. and he, he like for fuck's sake he messages me all the time he's like when are we recording something together it's like well, you fucking calm down i don't even know what we're gonna fucking record yet <laughs> but like he's actively trying to get involved and that's not something my ex did you're used to yeah it's not something you're used to oh god no like i'm used to being left in the shadows and basically only being called when i'm needed yeah and i know that feeling i'm glad i'm not in that position anymore but do we believe in the idea of soulmate psycho i do because at the time when i was with this girl and I thought, like, before her family and everything found out and got involved the way that they did, mm. I felt like 
we had bonded to the point to where I felt like she was my soulmate. Like my yeah. ex, at the, like my ex didn't mean shit to me at this point. Like yeah. she was everything to me. Yes. So would you say yes then? Yes. Okay. Have you ever had a one night stand? Yes, I have. I fucking wish I have. Honestly, I feel I feel like I'm so inexperienced on that side. Like a lot of people think, uh, like to give you an idea, I've had people messaging me on like Instagram when I've uploaded a picture. Obviously, I'm a redhead, so naturally that's already going to get attention. But then I keep right. getting people like sending me private messages, being like, "Oh, I bet you're a really like naughty one in bed, or you look like." Or my personal favorite comment was, "It looks like you look like you've gone down more than a blow up doll." Oh my god, what but I'm the sat, fuck? But I'm sat here thinking, the funny thing is, the amount of sexual partners I've had is actually really low. Because it takes me a long time to get to that point with somebody. Yeah. Like, hold on. I've had four sexual partners my whole life. That's, that's not bad. That's really good. And I, well, to give you an idea, my first one, I was with him for two years. My second one, I was with him for nearly a year. My third one was not intended. You know what I mean by that? Yep. And then my fourth one was my four-year relationship. So if we had yep. Cade being in there, I'm on five. But I'm only counting people I've actually physically been with. Right. So I'm not gonna lie, I don't think four is bad. No, it's not. It is not bad at all. Do you have a sweet tooth, Psycho? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I feel like me and you are just going to be the type to just get a movie up and just eat tubs of ice cream. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you enjoy a bit of drama and chaos in life to keep things interesting once in a while? I feel oh, like your answer is going to be... You're like, yes? Yes. Yeah, let's see. With me, the way that... There's a reason why four is my lucky number is because every four years, some sort of really big drama happened. Uh-huh. So, and I'm not just saying that because obviously I came out of that four-year relationship, but like when me and my first boyfriend were together, this was my long-distance one before came now, we were together for, for two years. Right. Um, then obviously we were split for two years, and then two years after we split, he got back in contact with me to check up on how I was doing because he had heard I'd like gone to hospital because obviously that's when I had my incident. So, yeah. and obviously there were feelings going a bit wild about that, and obviously he he kind of revealed a bit too much, saying that, you know, he still loved me and still cared about me, and I'm like, oh, shit. That's not good. Yeah. Like, I had to shut down that shit show real, real quick, because otherwise I think my, my heart was kind of like, oh, shit, he still loves you, he's still into you, and I'm like, nope, we established it's not going to work. Don't get your, yep. don't get any ideas. Right? Bye. Well, we've already established this earlier in the game, so yes. Yes, I like fire. <laughs> Is there anything that you're passionate about in life? Yeah, Miko and reading. Yes. Yep. Or Miko, Fox Mommy. reading, Inari. Fox Mommy, reading, Inari, and writing. Yep. Would you consider yourself to be a gentle person? Considering how many times, like, how much trauma I've been through... I try to be, like, I really genuinely try to be, but it's hard. Okay, so do you want to put that down as a yes, then? Yes. Are you afraid of conflict? Nope. nope. I have no fear of conflict. Have any of these questions made you nervous? A few of them have, yes. Are you feeling relaxed at the moment? Yeah, I've got a Nari, so it's not too bad. A good baby. Do you think anyone hates you? Yes. Do you hate anyone in particular? That's a yes. Yup, I do. Are you prone to holding grudges? Yes, I am for a very long oh, time, yeah. and there's, there's gr some grudges I will never let go of. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Forgive, but never forget. Do you agree with this statement? No, because there are some certain instances where you cannot forgive what has been done. Mm. Everything happens for a reason. Do you agree with this statement? 
No, because I think that there are certain instances where there are things that you can do to prevent certain things from happening, but there are oftentimes out of your control, so there's nothing you can do. So no, I don't think everything happens for a reason. Okay. Do you like explosions? Yes, I do. <laughs> do you enjoy the smell of burning firewood? Actually, yes. I love the scent of burning firewood. Never smelt that, so I would love to know what that feels like someday. Are you, are you afraid comforting. of flying? I don't know, because I've never flown before. Okay, so we'll put that on the no for now. Yeah. Are you afraid of driving? Nope. Considering I've driven most of my adult life with only having one eye, I have no fear of driving at all. Hmm. Do you think that war between nations is healthy? No. War is never healthy between anybody because nobody wins in the end. Mm -hmm. Would you consider yourself to be open-minded? Yes. Do you ever dream about being chased? Yes, I do. Do you ever dream about hurting someone else? Honestly, yes, I have. Would you consider yourself to be a violent person? No, but I had violent thoughts. Mm. I think everyone's had violent thoughts at some point now. <laughs> if I were to tell you that hell was coming for you, would you know what I meant? Yes. If your answers to these questions could supernaturally predict your potential fate, would you believe it and use it as a cautionary procedure to change your future and save your own life? I would try. I would try to adhere to the advice, but I wouldn't make a. I wouldn't make a guarantee. I would try. Yeah. So it says, would you believe it and use it as a cautionary procedure? I would try. So yes. Yeah, that's good to know. Would you consider yourself to be incredibly self-aware? No, I'm not very self-aware at all. Yeah. If I told you that mirrors were a gateway to another realm, would you believe me? Strangely enough, yes, because I've, like, there are certain witches who, I don't know if your mom does, but there are some witches that will use mirrors to scry. Um, my mum doesn't scry. My mum's what they call a green witch, and so she's, like, more into her, like, herbs and natural, like, spell jars and some potions. Meanwhile, oh. my... Because technically, this is where my family kind of is a bit weird. So you've got, like, the good side of the family, which is, like, the good slash white witches. So green being, um, like, kind of very herb-like exact. And then the white witch is kind of genuinely doing a mixture of everything, but not specializing in a particular subject. Then you've right. got the grey slash black witches. So the black witches dark magic. are like dark magics, so like hexes, curses, you know, that kind now of thing. See, I don't screw with that shit. I know and, better. And then you've got and then you've got the grey witches. So technically I'm actually a grey. So I'm neutral. So I don't lean towards a particular topic as in I don't go towards herbs and stuff like that. So I can kind of do a mixture of the two. So I could put a blessing on somebody, which I do on a regular occasion, or I but, could yeah, you go can and also put a hex on somebody. I yeah, would only be can... honest, I've cast two hexes my entire life and both of them have worked because that person went through living hell Damn. until I stopped it. To give you, to, to give you a very, um, very quick rundown, I was, <laughs> I was in college at the time and my um, reputation in the college got really badly ruined because I was in the class full of boys. I put uh -huh. a hex on that person, and this could have been a coincidence, but within two weeks after casting it, that person's mum passed away. Oh, damn. So I stopped it because I was like, okay, that's a bit far even for me. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I'm the I'm not a good witch by any means. I kind of lean to more, more towards crystals and stuff like that. Like I recharge them and stuff like that. But yeah. I'm definitely not a good, but I'm definitely not a bad. So if we go under the official witch terminology, I am a grey witch. So I'm So yeah, neutral. you are neutral. Plus the fact grey is like my second favourite colour, so I guess it counts for something. There you go. Yeah. Do you feel, can you feel someone's watching you right now or something watching you? I feel like there's always something watching me. Yeah. 
Can you hear the whispers? Only in my head. Do you want to say yes? Yes. Do you feel cold? Nope. I'm actually kind of warm. Toasty. Do you feel uneasy? Nope. nope. Do you feel like something is coming? No, I think if I felt- I think if there was something coming, I'd be able to sense it. Yeah. If something were coming, do you have an I a good idea of what it might be? Hmm. No, I don't think I would. Do you enjoy the taste of blood? Yes, I do. God's sake. I thought we got off the- I thought we got off the kinks topic. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> would you rather ble bleed out than be sat on fire? Yes, I would. I would rather bleed out. Would you help your best friend cover up a murder they committed? That's a fucking yes. Yes, I would. In a heartbeat. Do you think about death often? Yes, but that goes hand in hand with my depression, though. Mm. If you think, do you think you'd survive if you had to fight off a pack of wolves, um, barehanded? Probably not, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't try. Would you stay overnight in a haunted house by yourself if someone dared you to do it? Yes, I would. Well, I've lived you're in haunted house. I don't. I don't do theirs. The only time I'll do it is true for Dower, but that's in a very uh, good situation. Right. If someone was trying to kill you, do you think you'd be able to take their life if you had to? If I had to, yeah, I think I could. If your mother turned into a zombie, do you think you'd have what it takes to put her down? I'd put the bitch down as soon as she got bit. If there's a hell, do you think you're going there? Yep. <laughs> yep. Have you ever attempted to contact spirits? Yes, I have. Have you ever had a sudden urge to jump in front of a car? Yes, I have. Eesh. Have you ever had a sudden urge to push someone in front of a car? Yes, I have. I think we've all had that urge at some point in our lives. <laughs> if you were a witness to a murder and the killer threatened to threatened you if you told anyone, would you still go to the police? Yes, I would. Have you ever seen a ghost or anything supernatural that you could not explain? Yes, I have. Spooky. If you could come back as a ghost, would you choose to haunt someone and make their life hell? I feel like you would. Oh, hell yeah, I would. In a heartbeat. <laughs> Damn make, straight. If you could make a deal with the devil in exchange for your soul, would you make take the opportunity to make a deal? Well, if I had a soul, then I would probably say yes, but it Let's also depends you have a soul the... for the sake of the question. <laughs> then yes, but it would also depend on what the deal would entail, too. Yeah, but I, th I think it'd be one of those ones where you set the conditions from the sounds of it. Ah, uh, okay. If someone were hiding in your room right now and I told you exactly where they were, would you go check? No, because I know for a fact nobody's in here except for me. Are you concerned that someone might be hiding in your room currently? Nope. Do you ever worry that someone might be living in your house without your knowledge? Nope, because I know every inch of this house and I know where all the hiding spots are. Fair enough. Are you afraid of leaving your feet to hang off the edge of, a, of the bed as you sleep at night? Nope. Now see, I've never had that problem because I'm too short. Have you have your feet ever been pulled while you are sleeping? Nope. Have you ever felt like you were sleeping only to suddenly awake from a sleep? Yeah, but that's only because I've had out of body experiences like a I scary few. those things, honestly. Like you feel like one minute you're asleep and then the next minute you're like <gasps> You're like yep. awake. That's scary. Yeah, that's that's your that's your that's your astral form being jerked back into your body, and that's a hell of a landing for me sometimes. <laughs> Do you realize that you might be incredibly fucked up? Yes. I yeah. know I am. <laughs> I'm if fucked you... up, I'm unstable, and I know it. If you were crazy, you wouldn't know you are you were crazy. Do you understand? Yes. If you could read people's minds and know exactly what everyone was thinking at all times, would you allow yourself that power? Yeah, sure. Well, I'd love to know what people thought about me on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm-hmm. If you could rob a bank and get away with it, would you do it? Yes, to get the hell out of this country. Hell yeah. If you could turn invisible, would you spy on people? I feel like you would. Yes, I would. <laughs> well, come on, there's nothing wrong with guilty pleasures. Are you afraid of death? Nope. 
Does the thought that there might be nothing after our life bother you? No, it don't. Does the thought that there might be an afterlife bother you? Nope. Are you afraid of being abandoned? Yes. I think we, again, I think we all are. Are you afraid of dying alone? No. Are you afraid of being lied to by the ones you love? Yes. Do you think the ones around you would betray you? Yeah, honestly, yes, I think they would. Mm. Do you have a hard time trusting people? Yes, but I have, like, ever since we first started talking, I've had no issues trusting you. Yeah, I like to think I'm quite... Um, the thing is, I'm very transparent. Like, if I'm doing you something... Are. Like, if you message me and be like, can I get your opinion on something, I will be honest with you and tell you what I think. Like, it oh, might come across me. harsh, but, like, I'm one of those people, I'm a bit of a tough love girl. Like, if I think you can improve on something, then I will tell you. Like, me and Henry have had this conversation multiple times. Like, I'm a bit hard on him when it comes to things like his mental health and his debt. And it's yeah. because I know that he doesn't help himself on the best of days. So, as a friend, it stresses me out because I want to help him and be there for him, but I can only do so much when I'm all the way over here. So, yeah. sometimes I feel like if I... Because I've been in worse positions than him, right? Yeah. And I use my experiences to push myself forward. Right. Obviously, like, I had a previous YouTube channel which went really badly wrong. I got hacked, and then I was like, right, okay, well, let's start under a new name and start anew. And now look at me. Right? You've done you've done damn good for yourself. I'm getting there. Only I, I, am, I am proud of you. You have done damn good for yourself. Don't make me cry. Wait, actually, if I'm I cry, it might, make, it might make, if I cry, it might make my video blow up. Hold on. <laughs> every time YouTube, cry, every time YouTube sees me crying, they're like, "She's crying. Push her on the algorithm." Yup. <laughs> like honestly, I still I hear the music from the um from the Ruka Devata and the Hida cutscene, and it still gets and me now. It still Aww. makes me want to cry. Oh God! <laughs> it's like no, the baby. Right? Do you feel alone in a crowd? Yes, I do. Do you feel like you understand others fairly well, but others have a difficult time understanding you? Yes. Do you feel slightly more comfortable at this point? I mean, I have a Nari, so I, I guess I do. Do you feel safe? Yeah, I would say so. Do you feel like you could be easily fooled by loved ones? Yes, but that's my paranoia, though. Yeah. Oh. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh, dear. <laughs> What's it with these tests with... and going into sex questions? I don't know. I know that's a yes. That's a definite yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you could live like royalty, would you? Nope, not if I couldn't have my best friend next to me. Oh god, keep you ordered. If you could travel anywhere in the world once, instantly, and for free, but you may never return to that particular place again once you left, would you do it? Well, who's to say you have to leave? That's true. I mean, Loophole. who's to say you couldn't- Who's to say you couldn't teleport there and then just stay there? Very true. Finding the loopholes in the question, I like it. <laughs> that be a yes? My yelp, yeah, that would be a yes. Do you believe in time travel? No. Do you think that aliens could potentially be humans from the future? Oh my god. Just traveling back in time for various reasons. No, because I don't believe in aliens. Would you choose could you bleh, English. Would you choose to sleep inside of a coffin? Yup, just to see what it's like. Mm. If you had to chop off one of your hands or feet to escape from the killer, would you do it? Yes, I'd rather chop off my hand. Does the sight of blood make you feel squeamish? Nope, not at all. If, for me, it depends on the a... level of blood. Like, if, if say, for example, someone's bleeding out on the floor, then I might feel a bit squeamish. But if, say, for example, it's, like, it's just like a little paper cut or something like that, then it's not so bad. 
I I have a trauma based blood kink. Okay, I can't help it. Hi. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Psycho. I keep yawning. I've been up really early uh, you're, today. You're good. You're okay. <sighs> nah. I'm trying to cut you're down on funny. my coffee and it's not helping. <laughs> <laughs> if you knew a doll was haunted, would you buy it? Yes, I would. Just to have somebody to talk to. Would you consider yourself to be superstitious? No, I'm not superstitious. Like, if a black cat walks, walks in front of me, I'd be like, Oh, kitty! I don't even know what that reference was. Does the thought of being put in a straight jacket make you feel uncomfortable? Nope. Would you ever walk through a graveyard just for fun? Not just for fun, no. There would have to be a reason I would I would have to be there. Yeah. Would you try human flesh to see what it tastes like? If it was cooked and they didn't tell me what it was until after the fact, then maybe. Mm. But if someone like gave you a piece of like human flesh and said, "Here you go, try this." Now, if they told me what it was beforehand, I'd be like, "Um, no, I'm good." So no, because you yeah, weren't actively no. right. Okay. That's how my grandpa tricked me into eating rattlesnake one time. Ah, uh, nah. Do you believe in voodoo? Yes, I do. If I told you that there's a voodoo doll that looks just like you hanging in a tree somewhere near your house, would that make you feel uncomfortable? Nope, I'd go look for it. True, me too. Do you get uncomfortable <laughs> on Friday the 13th? No, because 13 is my favorite number. I love Friday the 13th. You and Henry both. Do you ever worry that you're being followed? Yes, that's why I don't go anywhere by myself if I can. Same as me. Like, when I have to walk home, like, on the late shifts, when it's, like, pitch black outside, I genuinely will stay on the phone to, like, a family member because I'm so paranoid of walking home on my own. It's that bad. I don't blame you. I um, don't blame are you. Me. Are you afraid of sharks? No, because I've never seen one. Humans are more dangerous than any other animal. Do you agree? Yes, because unlike animals, humans can be unpredictable. Exactly. Would you consider yourself to be a dangerous person? No. Would you rather choose the death penalty over living the rest of your life in a cell? Okay, call me finding the loophole, but it depends on the type of the death penalty, because there's various forms. There's okay, the gonna, gas. Yeah, you've got gas, you've got poison, you've got the guillotine, you've got you've the got torture hanging. one. Yeah, you've, you've got, got some, hang I forget what the there's machine's like called, but like... For me, the one that makes me cringe the most is the one that was done back in the medieval days where they would like strap you up by like on your arms and they would just keep stretching you until your limbs rip off. Oh, you mean uh, the wheel? Yeah. You're talking about the wheel. Yeah. Now see, I think I'd rather just die by poison or hanging. Honestly, honestly, I would rather just sit the rest of my life in a cell because if I'm comfortable staying at the same four walls, why, why, yeah. Yeah, why die basically? If I told exactly. you that there were seven secret messages hidden throughout the last 100 questions or so, would you believe me? Yeah, because knowing this game, there's hidden messages throughout the other ones, too. Yeah. Do you believe that you might be in danger from a supernatural force? No. Would you consider yourself to be mentally stable? Uh, that depends. E hitting oh. us with the oof questions today. I have to keep dusting in my change. chair. God damn it! Right. So would what? So when I when I think mentally stable, I mean I mean I think as in am I happy where I am mentally? Um, am I constantly dealing with um unaliving thoughts? Am I dealing with um you know how how good am I at handling my anxiety and my depression? You know that kind of thing. Oh, in that case, no, I'm not. That's what I think, at least, when I think I'm mentally stable. Would you trust your best friend to be alone with your lover? Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't do shit. I'd, you know, I'd invite you. Hell yeah, there we go. <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> don't, don't encourage me, Psycho, for fuck's sake. Would you <laughs> Would you trust yourself to be alone with your best friend's lover? Yeah, because, yes, I, I, because I'd, you... I'd be comfortable, because I know you're not into dudes. <laughs> Exactly. I, I'm not into guys. Like, I have guys that are friends, but I'm not into them, like, sexually. Yeah. If you could leave this life behind and live one of your wildest dreams, never to return to this current timeline again, would you do it? 
No, because I wouldn't have my bestie. And an Ari. Exactly. And then do you have, have a little... Do you have a goal in life that you are determined to achieve? I would have thought this would be about your writing. Yes, I do. I want to get at least one of my books published. If nothing else, if I can just get one of them published, I would be happy. Okay. Right, I just need to call Cade back one second. He's just tried to ring him in. I want to make sure it's nothing important. This is the life of a streamer. To, to, to the life of a YouTuber, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, the only, I mean, if I was in the middle of recording and then you got home from work, if you don't come in and interrupt me, I will slap you. Because I need my cuddle. I need my cuddles when you get home. <laughs> I'm just saying, if when we live together and you're recording, I'm going to interrupt you a lot. <laughs> like you'll be recording, and all of a sudden you hear, "Bang!" You're like, "What? <laughs> you want mashed potatoes or mac and cheese and steak?" <laughs> You know I'm just gonna make a compilation at that point and just be I just make a compilation of Cade interrupting Mim for X number of minutes straight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and every time you're just gonna see me shitting myself. Pardon? Are you done recording or are you still in the process? Uh still in the process. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't urgent because I had two voice calls from you and I just wanted to make sure it wasn't urgent. Oh, Okay, I'm sorry. So the first and thing I did apologize. It wasn't, it wasn't going through. Um, oh, okay. I had a lack of connection. Uh, I didn't realize that that counts. So, sorry about that. No, that's okay. So, don't worry. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't anything urgent, babe. That's all. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm good. So go ahead and get back to the recording. I'm going to text you when I'm home. Or you can call me when you're done. Does that sound good? Yes, daddy. Alright, good girl. I will uh, see you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh my god. Bro, <laughs> oh, well, that was so cute. I'm just gonna melt because he called me a good girl. <laughs> you are a good girl. <laughs> that was really sweet, though. That was that was cute. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's just the way he goes, oh, I'm gonna come in and interrupt you a lot, and I'm gonna... <laughs> And I'm just like, I'm just gonna make a compilation, just make a meme out of it. That, that, that would be that would be hilarious. And every time he just comes and crashes through the door and he's just like, babe, and I'm like, and you just see me shit myself every single time like, <laughs> I'm gonna answer this question for you. It's definitely a yes, because you message me about like having motivation for your Ryan all the time. Yes, I do. Yeah, I think we all have like that problem. If someone attacked you, would you attack them back? Well that's a fucking given. I'd be disappointed yeah. if you said no. Hell yeah, I would. Are you sure that the life you're living is real and not just a figment of your imagination or some crazy in-depth dream? Yes, because I got the scars to prove it. Rip. If you woke up right now and realized that everything you know of this life was a dream and your actual life were, and everyone in it was completely different, would you be disappointed with that outcome? The only reason I'm saying no to this is because you and Inari wouldn't be there. So would you be disappointed with that income? You so you wouldn't be disappointed, or you would be? I would be. So that would be a yes then. Yes, I would be. Okay. If you could win the lottery but only have seven years to live, would you take the money? Yes, and I'd split it with you. Oh. And now for the final and most important question, I want you if to. If really... I. Yeah, go on. I swear, if it's the non punch question. I want you to really think about this one and answer honestly. The fact that we start thinking this is a, non a punch and a nun question just shows that the game developers have really solidified this. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time and don't answer too quickly. Really think about it. Are you happy? It's not punching the nun. I'm shocked. <laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> honestly, no, I'm not. No. Okay. So she's now going to put the results in and we're going to expose you for a third time. Okay, so we're, let's have a little look. <clears throat> the judging aspect, you fucking people. Based on what you've told them, Psycho, this is what they want to see. 
I see a darkness swirling within your soul, a deep level of anger. There's something inside of you that no one knows about. Perhaps not even you, but you can feel it. You got this ending too. I did. I told you we're going on a blood massacre, babe. Hell yeah, let's do it. Let's just fuck some shit up. I'm tired of this crap. <laughs> I see blood. Lots of blood. Blood on the walls, blood on the ceiling, blood on the floor, blood as far as the eye can see. How much fucking blood do we have in our bodies? Ten liters. And we can survive with half of it. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so you got the same ending as me, so we are going to skip this because we know what the secret word is. It will be a bloodlust, so me and you are both traumatized as fuck, and we were both going on a killing spree. We're both fucked up. That's just how it is. There's no changing that. Yeah, pretty much. That's interesting. Like, I'm still yet to do this quiz with um, Cheese. And yeah. I have the, uh, me and him think very similar, so I would not be surprised if he gets this as well. Yep, your secret word is bloodlust. That's crazy. That is insane that me and you got the exact same ending, but we Great. answered the questions differently. Great minds think alike, babe. That is true. That's Indeed. very true, sweetheart. That's mm. very true. God, this is going to be a fun three hours to edit down. 